Hello and welcome to the ECE 102 lesson on the last phase of the design process, the implement phase. We ended the ideate phase by selecting our top design, and by this I meant fully defining it with words, diagrams, flowcharts, whatever is needed to make your intentions clear. But that top design is just a theory. Now we get to turn it into reality by building a prototype. Prototype is a fancy sounding word, but it simply means first of its kind. You should feel excited that you get to bring an idea to reality and not pressured because there likely will be many other builds downstream from this one. It is easiest to imagine a prototype as a physical item, but that is not always the case. It depends on the problem. Other possibilities for a prototype include a code, storyboard, or organizational chart. Your aim is to replicate the top theoretical design, but expect trade-offs. You are limited by your process constraints. For example, you may want to use a specialized part, but it would take the shop two weeks to manufacture it for you, and you need it in one week. You may choose to use a smaller scale, or different material than the proposed design. Why? Because you have some things to learn about the broad design before investing time or money in the details. Let's say you are designing a new model of car. It's important to know what customers think of the car's look, so you probably want your early prototype to just be drawings or a scale model rather than a full-size build. As soon as the top design is selected, begin on your prototype. Source parts and working hours as soon as possible. Anticipate delays or construction limitations. I have learned through numerous home repairs that every project takes three times longer than expected. And that holds true even when I try to factor in the three times rule at the start. After building your prototype, you're done with your design. No, that's not true at all. We still have the critical evaluate step which then probably leads to more iterations of the whole design process. The second most common mistake in the design process that I see from students is to not evaluate thoroughly. And there's a good reason for this. Your prototype is your baby. You have invested days or weeks into the design process so far. You want it desperately to succeed. But that's not the point of evaluating. Your goal should be to identify flaws in the design so that you can fix them in the next iteration. The good news is that you already have a tool that you have developed, which will help you be more objective and thorough when evaluating. That tool is the list of solution requirements from step four of the process. As emphasized when we discussed it, every solution requirement needs to be specific and testable. Look at these examples here from the hiking boots design. The requirement reads, pair must fit within 15 inch wide by 12 inch deep by seven inch tall box. Well, it's pretty obvious how to test that. Make a box of that size and see if the boots fit. Record the results and write out any related comments. The next one reads, appearance must be rated as above average attractive by focus groups. There's a little more flexibility in how you could test this one, but the suggested test there is a logical application. Again, after running the test, record results and comments. So you see how straightforward it can be to evaluate when we have a list to serve as the basis. Obviously, you'd continue running these tests for each item on your list, which can take a good amount of time. A quick flashback to our overview presentation. How do you know when you have finished your design? When you achieve the solution requirement, step four, under the given process constraints, step two. That step four is so very important. It lets you know exactly what you need to accomplish before brainstorming. It lets you know what test you should run, and it lets you know when to wrap up the project. This last slide here is a recap of the entire design process. It lists each of the steps as before, but now it adds something that may be very helpful to you as you work on your own designs. Ideas for deliverables. 
So when you're working on a project and you're on, say, step five, you know you should be brainstorming, but what does that look like? Well, here you see that your scratch papers should end up holding quick doodles or text summaries of any early ideas. Hold on to this table. Working on a design can be abstract and messy, which can lead to poor results or confusion as to what to do next. Use the design process as a lamp to your feet, guiding your next step. Use the deliverables as tangible examples of what you should be working on. Oh, and one final footnote. I said just now what was the second most common mistake when working through a design. What do you think is the number one mistake? I said it in a previous video and I'll say it again. It's trying to brainstorm from the start. Do your best to understand a problem before trying to solve it.